conventional one-to-many broadcasts look a lot like this. And this is still what a lot of setups are doing when it comes one-to-many broadcasts, right? We have a one, uh, a one, uh, one RTMP published going into some kind of media server ingest. There's a CDN in front of it that's taking care of all your HTTP edge caching and it's going out to HLS. Um, and so that's, that's, you know, that's a tried and true workflow, right? And for me, that's what this looks like, right? We've got vendors in this stack that know how to play that game. And I, and I, you know, that's, I'm not trying to like call out vendors here. This is just a slide that I've put together from various presentations, but you know, you know, I've got equipment from Asia or Vidion that, you know, knows how to talk in that language, RTMP going into some Wellesley GPU that's running on EC2. And I've got CloudFront in front of it to take care of HLS distribution to tens of thousands of viewers. And we've got player tech stacks that work with that. So I'm gonna intentionally contrast that with WebRTC right now because it's still sort of the new kid on the block, right? It's been around for a long time, but when it comes to just sort of established names that people can rely on, and, that, and this, is, this is an opportunity for everyone here, right? Is that basically that, that this is still a road that needs to be paved and, and, and you know, hopefully not just with good intentions because we know where that road goes, but um, you know, with WebRTC, you could do the same thing. You could have a WebRTC client that pushes into a WebRTC gateway and lots of people watch over WebRTC. The cattle auction I talked about, this is what we're doing, right? We have a WebRTC publisher that's running in the browser. It's pushing to a WebRTC, our WebRTC gateway and everyone just connects and watches it in low latency, right? In low and, you know, with uh, very minimal round trip time. There's not a whole lot of interaction. They're not video conferencing. This is a pretty simple architecture. This can be a problem to scale. So if you need to do this with thousands of people, you might not be able to pull it off with one box. You know, if you're doing it in the hundreds, then you could probably get away with doing this with, you know, a simple, a more simplified architecture. Um, but, you know, at, at, as you start to scale WebRTC, you have to start looking into, you know, different models and maybe looking at cloud services um, that are out there. Um, and, and again, you can do many to many, of course, with WebRTC, where, you know, you have people engaging with each other as clients. We're all uh, publishing streams, we're all receiving streams, and, you know, that's your, your many to many relationship there, right? And, and again, there's different variations. But I intentionally leave out vendors on this stack because I feel that, you know, I'm not saying that there is there aren't good solutions out there, right? I've I, I've worked with Millicast, I've worked with Frozen Mountain, I've worked with Red Five Pro, I've worked with Wowza. I'm starting to get more work, uh, you know, working on on Janus projects. But the you know, there it's not like they're they're tried and true names like JW Player or you know these things that we know have been around in the industry for a long time. And and that that will change, right? And so that that landscape is going to be quickly changing. COVID has certainly been accelerating that as well.